I think that you're you're maybe getting to a place where you don't need to show much work. Like you kind of do this um, in your head a bit. But this negative sign here, I would treat it like a negative one. So I'm thinking of three times negative one. Those are the coefficients. And then I'm thinking a one times a to the fourth. There's an invisible one here. So I match the a's up. Then I match the B's up, B4 times B2. So breaking it down, that would be negative 3, and then I add the exponents on the A's. And I add the exponents on the B's. Negative 3, A5, B4. Everybody okay on that one? Okay, let's do another one then. Let me know if I can slow down. Parentheses with an exponent on the outside. That changes things. Everything in the parentheses is the power of two. So we got um, two to the first power times the two on the outside. X to the fifth power times the two on the outside. 
Why does a fourth flower kind of appear on the outside? Two squared, x10, y8, one square, two. Still got it right, thumbs up. Geometry one. Let me help you out. Let me show you the area of a parallelogram is the base times the height. Parallelogram is called base times the height. So we got five and a third and seven squared. Add your exponent. Sorry, I need to go faster. Last one. Root six. I'm I'm going to max out by this height. So much easier. 3 times 17. Now I add the exponent. Why? There isn't any other y. So y3 just stays y3. Again, I like the answer. So quiz on Thursday. These are the skills we practiced so far on Monday and Tuesday. I'm gonna really add to it today. We're gonna really complicate things, make it do things, figure things, all that stuff. Before we get into today's notes, let's go over Friday's homework. So open your workbooks to page 86. Check your answers if you join your group. I'm going to put the right answers up.
talk about 11 I hadn't really done many like 11 in the notes so you have a fraction with an exponent on the outside this fraction is going to be squared and the P is going to be squared that that little two goes to the whole fraction which is technically the coefficient and it goes to the P this is number 11 so when I square a fraction, the top and the bottom get squared. 2 squared over 3 squared, and that P is still there. And that's how they arrive at 4 over 9. So that happens here in 12 as well. 1 fourth squared is 1 squared over 4 squared, and that's where the 16 came from. Which are the ones that I kind of drew for a little bit of work? Yeah, I was going to do number eight. That's the one I thought of. Yeah. <clears throat> we got a negative. <clears throat> I like to write this negative sign as a negative one. It's just a negative sign by itself. I like to put it as a negative one. We have an x to the first, y to the first, and all of that is to the third power. Times x to the first z to the first. So everything in here gets this 3. So it's negative 1 to the third power. It's x to the first to the third power. y to the first to the third power. 
negative one times negative one is one times another negative one is negative one. So something to an odd exponent has negative squares to the power. So that's negative one, x to the fourth, y to the third, g. So the one in front, or here they just put a negative sign in front. <clears throat> Other questions on the assignment? So I would say that Kinsley's uh, upper right hand corner says seems to me it looks a lot more complicated than Thursday thing. Okay, and then today we're gonna come through this stuff. Let's now so this is um seven dash one and now we're gonna start at seven dash two, which just puts some more different um properties of exponents into the can you say this would be a lot of space or do you need to do the same thing? I think I need to do the same thing. Okay. So like um for instance like a box. So like this small square and a box have this this box. So this is just this all in the um the box. So this is a box and then the small square and the box have have the the bottom half of the box up. It has has the And then they add, <clears throat> Amazon wants to sell a pair of tickets. And so um, it programs the software to find the bottom of the box where the amount of change will last the most. And so the software has the whole thing, right? But three different variables. And so now if you go to Amazon and you just say, well, the shoe bar is increased by 10 when you place it in this box through the program. And that software Anybody follow what I'm talking about? So really all software works with variables. So like if you just look here and put these, the measurements in the software, they can find the bottom. And the software tells you this box is full of a lot of different things. So like if you find the bottom, let me show you how this works. You know, like price and date. <coughs> and then the, the software tells them what the gross price should be for the amount of bottom. So like, you can find the bottom. But just variables. If you think a variable means I can plug in a person's height and weight. So I'm going to show you about dividing with exponents, so fractions. this down word for word. I won't copy that whole box. Maybe you want to just say what to do with that fraction with exponents. Subtract. Instead of just thinking about it as subtraction, I prefer to think of it as canceling out. So this example has c to the 11th, 11 c over 8 c. 
this example here. I'm going to write it out. So if I actually had 11 C's up here, there's 30, there's 6, there's 9, there's 10, and there's actually 11 C's. It's a lot to write all those out, but it's good to help at first. And then I actually have eight C's down below. One, two, three. That's six. And that's eight. So um, if I just canceled out, you guys know anything over itself is one. So this cancels to be one. This is 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 one. If I cancel out, I end up with C to the third, there's nothing down below, so it's a one, right? And that's the same as if in the very first step I would have just done 11, take away 8, is 3. So subtraction is really a shortcut to kind of blend that in. Ready? No one's on top, no one's on bottom, no one's there. So what do you guys like better, writing them all out or just subtracting them? Thumbs up if you've subtracted exponents before. Some of these examples are like more difficult than your homework, I just want to say. I'm going to see some tricky stuff here. Hope the first is not too tricky. Okay, first one looks doable. First one looks doable. I think it's like the third one. It's like very difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would do seven minus six, the seven's on top, and the six is in the denominator. Twelve minus three x to the first, y to the ninth. And maybe sometimes you're like, is that really it? I want to question it. You could always draw it out. Hard to draw that many out. Cancel. Cancel. Oh yeah, just one left over. Cancel. Yep, nine left over. So you can either subtract or draw out, whichever you prefer. I close it. Okay, I'll give you a moment.
So this is a one. It's a one on the x. So I have three minus one, nine minus two, a squared b seven. Yeah, that's letter D. Maybe you can't see it very good because it got black. Okay, next one. Oh. oh, okay, here we go, here we go. We've already um, practiced this um, before, I didn't even write it down. I'm just going to put a little tip on here for you. Remember to apply the outside exponent to absolutely everything, even the denominator. And that's my advice to you. There's an exponent outside. Make sure everything inside the parentheses gets it even the denominator. Now try this on paper. A lot of people make the same mistake. I don't know if you have. Did you do it last year? Think you got it all last week? Um, I think you did. I think you did. <laughs> Abby, do you think you got it? 
going in closer and it might be this. Uh, the x coordinate outside of the x to yeah. the right there, do you times that by the things on the bottom too? Yeah, yes, but you don't, like you're not going to do it times 4. Yeah. You do it times this 1. That's on top of the 4. Anything without an x to the half is 1. So you multiply it to 3 to the x to the So that x part on three is one. So we one times three. Look at the other So, 3 to the third power, that's 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. And yeah, that's looking a lot like letter B. Three times three times four. So six times four. Three times four. Three times four. Three times four. Okay. Next property, the zero exponent property. Anything to the zero power is one, not zero. This is absolutely not what your brain would think. If anybody in their right mind sees a power of zero, they're going to think it's zero, all right? That's what you would guess. But it's not true. I'm going to try to show you why. Let's just write this in a list. We're in our room. The zero power is one. It actually means we're gonna move on this one. Where were you saying that before? You think the power of zero is one? Why would it be zero? Why would it not be zero? Are you just making this stuff up? <laughs> Okay, so you guys know what 5 to the first power is, right? 5. What's 5 squared? Because it's 5 times 5. What's 5 to the third power? 125 because it's 25 times 5. Anybody know 5 to the fourth? 1,025. Yeah, it's 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Okay. And now look at this. 
Okay. What helps you understand is if you can if you can work backwards. So here, five times five is twenty-five. Twenty-five times five is one twenty-five. One twenty-five times five is six twenty-five. Can anybody identify their pattern backwards? We're dividing by five if we want to go backwards. So six twenty-five divided by Divided by 5 would give us this number. 125 divided by 5 would give us this number. What's 25 divided by 5? What's 20? It's this number. You guys, what's 5 divided by 5? 1. one. And that's for 5 to be 0, power equals 1. Okay? Can I can I impart another piece of wisdom on you? We're about to look at negative exponents. You know what five to the negative one is? A lot of people think it's a negative number, but it's actually one fifth. Because it's one divided by five. One over one twenty fifth is five to the negative two. Because we're just dividing. 5 to the negative third is 1 over 125. 5 to the negative 4 is 1 over 625. Working the other way. So negative exponents aren't negative numbers, they're just real. As you work backwards, it's just dividing. You don't even need to write this one down. I left it like that on here. Because it's a little bit sloppy. Let's do this whole thing. 12 as a root, as a thing. 8 as a thing. Negative part. So many students will spend forever on this. And the answer is just 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Don't spend any time on it. There's 0 on the outside, the answer is 1. Alright, try this one now. Wait, oh, where's this one now? Try it.